Magical attire. Dressing the part. The magical practitioner will often set themselves apart from their normal everyday waking life by dressing up with magical attire. Understand that even by taking on a new magical name, it's not a form of schizophrenia. What it is, is you wear a certain set of clothes to perhaps work uh, a uniform to play the role. Um, perhaps if you're a church-going person, you wear a certain set of clothes to attend church. Um, you might wear a different set of attire to go mountain climbing than you might to do babysitting for your brother or sister's new infant child. The point is, is that in dressing a certain way, we kind of adopt a persona or a, men a certain mindset or mental frame to work with. Um, the basic attire is usually a robe and cloak. The color can be of your own choosing, though black is uh, definitely traditional when it comes to magic and mystery. Um, the robe is something of like a mumu or kaftan with a cord or rope tied about the waist. The cloak is a drapery of cape with a hood. So, like, a cloak has the cape, not necessarily actual arms, um, and the hood. Uh, your robe will be like a long nightgown, which is tied about the waist. This is a traditional outfit um, for magical work. Necklaces and pendants and such are also popular among metaphysical operators, but be aware that whatever you take on, um, it should be very personal, significant to you. Um, a lot of times people get into a runic symbol or some kind of pentagram just because it looks cool. And, you know, um, yeah, I own many, many sets of necklaces and magical regalia. To be honest, the Ankh is the only uh, pendant that I've, I've worn for the last couple of years solid. Um, that it, uh, it doesn't come off ever. <laughs> um, but uh, over 15 years of practicing, yes, I've acquired quite the collection of pendants and trinkets and whatnot, and each has their own, their own use. And um, so importantly, always, whenever adding tools, objects, garments, candles, anything, if it isn't contributing to your mindset, then it's a distraction. Um, so uh, other questions, body art? Body art is not entirely unheard of. Um, I don't personally have any at the moment, but um, ritual ritual body art uh, is common. Um, again, though, it should be something significant to you. Um, I've seen also in the recent uh, recent past here uh, uprising of use of. Uh, Chinese symbolism, which in and of itself I have no issue with, except that a lot of times the people have not done any real research into the background of that symbolism. So, you know, it, if, if you're going to take a symbol on as your own personal symbol, make sure it is meaning, meaningful to you. Um, so, um, mo most importantly though, it, robes and cloaks. Um, if, uh, if, you have a, if you have a cloak, um, the conical hat uh, is not is not necessary, um, but if you if if you have a good hood, then uh, it serves the same function. And one thing that the hood also does is it actually can be used to filter out the outside uh, distractions. So a lot of times you'll even see the Hebrew folk. Uh, meditating with uh, a hood or a cloth over themselves to block out the the outside world as they focus on their scripture or the Talmud or whatever it is that they're studying. So, um, these can be made 
uh, just as easy as they can be bought and they can be made very inexpensively. Um, look for look for Christmas uh, Christmas. Look for Halloween costumes <laughs> and. Uh, as far as the patterns and whatnot, and uh, you sh you'll surprise yourself as to what you can uh, what you can make for yourself.